My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UI path. Today we will check if an Excel time lies in a time span with UI path. It was a case I found on a UI path forum and it could be a little bit tricky to solve. And the fact that uh, this topic was posted three days ago and there uh, has not been a single reply to him that indicates that uh, indeed it's a bit complicated. However, we can see how we can solve it so we can all do it. First of all, we have uh, Sarah's data here. We have a column with dates. I think that's what Islam Tahiri means. And then we have a column with times. We won't use the dates, so we'll only use the times, this Islam Samara. I've uh, reproduced the data in Excel and we want to check if each one of these rows the value from here, the time value, lies in the time span from 8.30 in the morning and 17.30 in the night. And we need to, or we will see that it is the 24-hour format. So let's see how we can solve that with UiPath. Let me show you my Excel data. I just created the two columns, date and time, and I just created five uh, times. And we can see here that, let me, um, Reduce the size a little bit. So what we will see here is that uh, I just created three uh, times within the time span and two outside because those two here are later than 17.30 and uh, the, the early limit is 8.30 so these two clearly fall out of it. And these two, uh, these three are actually in it. But let's see how we can solve that in UiPath and let's uh, see the problems and how we deal with it. So first I will close this Excel sheet and I'll go to UI path. I'll drag in a sequence first and we will call that main. So it's just to have a better view, so a main. Then we will read the Excel sheet. So search the activities and find an Excel application scope. We'll drag it in. First we'll need a workbook path. I placed my workbook on the desktop so we can find it here. It's called book one. Now um, we will untick the visible. We will not have their operations visible. And then we'll have a read range still from the Excel activities. So drag this guy in. Sheet one, that's my sheet name, so that's good. And then we will output it to a data table over here. So press Control K. We can call it DT input. Again, call it what you want. And you can go down to variables. And we can indeed verify that we created a data table of the name DT input. So far so good. We can just change the scope to main if we will use it in the entire sequence. Um, and then we will have a for each row and then I'll illustrate the problem. So we'll need to be a little bit creative afterwards. However, it's not impossible and let me repeat again, there's no magic in UI path. It's really easy. You just have to get the idea. So it's, uh, yeah, it's basically just that you have to see it before and get a good idea. So in here we will iterate through each of the rows in DT input like this, and then we'll just print out the time, uh, the time column. Um, so let's just have a right line. And this one will be the current and row item. And we will say whatever in the time, item means column, so it's in the time column and then to string. And then you'll see the problem. Because if we do this, then we will run it. We'll wait a few seconds. By the way, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get all the new videos about UiPath and RPA. So now if we go to output, we can see that we have decimals. Well, that was not the time that we ex expected sorry, from our Excel sheet. So we need to do a little bit of trick. So let me delete this right line first. This one was just for inspecting. So first we will need to find a get row item. So we'll get the Q and the row here, that'll be row. And what we'll do here is that we'll uh, specify the column name. We could also have specified the column index. And this is, remember that the first column was date, and then we have this column, the time was the second column. And because this is zero indexed, we have to put in one here. However, let's specify the column name. So even though we moderate our Excel sheet, it will still be right. So time here, and then we will output it to a variable. And this one will be a generic value or we'll change it to that. So control K, we can call it GV time. 
like this. And then what we'll do is that we go down to variables. And we can see here that GV time is a string and we need to change that to a generic value. If it's not in your drop down like mine here, click browse for types. Then we go to search field and we will generic value here. And we can see that is this one, generic value. Click OK. And now we changed it. We can, I think we'll just stay in the do scope. So actually we didn't have to change this one either. But um, this one is just where our variables are declared. So here we, we'll, if we place everything in the do, we're fine. So, um, and then we will um, have a format value because now we need to format whatever we get, whatever, whatever we get here from the Q and row, we'll format that. So that's the time. So we will have a format value here, the generic value, format value and the programming. So drag this guy in. Here, the value that will be our generic value from before. And then we will set the format like this. So in the format type, change this to date time like this. Now you can see here that we can specify what pattern we want. And because it is uh, the, the time was formatted in Excel uh, as a date time, then we can just do this. So what we want is the hours. And because it's, it, it is 24 hours, then it's big H. Otherwise, it would have been small H's. So, uh, and then we want to have the minutes and the seconds. So now we have formatted, we, we got the data as we wanted, we can verify it. So drag in a right line. And then we'll say GV time just because now we formatted it up here. So let us try to run that again and verify that we indeed have a working uh, formatting. We will wait a few seconds. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot. So let's go to output and we can see we have our time nicely in our 24 hour format with the two last dates clearly out of the interval, the time span. So far, so good. So now we can uh, just uh, collapse this, but we'll still keep it. So we'll have it here. Then we'll need to create three variables. We will create a date time variable for our input because we will need to convert it to a date time because we want to compare times. And then we will have an early limit and an upper limit. And those one will be this one and this one. And while we're at it, a date time is always with a month or a day and a year and then hour, minute, seconds. So what we'll need to do here is that we will go to UiPath. Then we'll go to variables and just take it slow. You can easily pause this video or rewind it if you think it goes too fast. I know I can talk a little bit fast or sometimes, but I'll try to keep it slow. So here, first we will create a date time input. That one will be for our input. Go to variable type and then we will browse for types and we'll find a date time. So, uh, sorry, date. Uh, it's a bit date time. It's not me who uh, is mistyping, it's just this. Go to the M scorelib 4.00 date time. Like this. We will, um, this one uh, is defined in the sequence, but we need to have it in the do. So change that scope. So now we got this, then we got to create the early um, buffer, or the not the early buffer, the early limit. So that will be a date time early, we could call it. Now we can have the variable type and because we searched for it before, we can find it here. Again, we will change it to do and this one will give a default value. Because it is a date time, we will just type in a sample date. It doesn't matter what date you type in, we will not use it, but we'll need to have it here like this. And the early limit, that was 8.30 and 00, wasn't it? Go to the forum again and yes, it was. And the other one was 17.30. So uh, that is, uh, and of course, it's not in quotation marks like this. So, and then we'll have a date time late like this. And then we'll change this to date time. And we'll do it uh, the exact same way as we have the early. Let me change this to do as well. So, and the reason why it's not in quotation marks as the strings is that this is not a string. This is a date time variable. So, and then we will have the 1730, zero, zero, like this. So now we created two 
uh, date times and this one we will remove in a bit so we'll only have our times and we can um, compare it to our date time input where we will also remove a date. So let me close down this variable and within this for each row we will drag in an assign because now we will change our input variable, this generic value from up here with the time, we will change that to a date time. And here it seems a little bit counterintuitive but that's the way we do it here in UFL. So, um, and just, uh, you don't have to learn anything from, from this video, just uh, repeat the workflow. I will, by the way, I'll put the um, workflow files and the Excel file in below. So go download it and do it yourself. You will learn a lot from that. And don't just sit and watch. I'll um, definitely recommend to do the workflow yourself and just pause the video. Sorry to ram. Then we will say date input because now we'll change this one to a date time or actually the input up here to this, it will format it as this date time input. So let's have this value because this one will be a rather long one. So what we'll need to do is that we'll first have it a date time and then we'll say pass.pass exact. This one will pass a string to a date time and our string, that will be, and again, we only, remember we only had the time from up here as a generic value. So we need to put in a, um, so we'll, again, we'll have our sample like this, then we'll have a space because there's a space between the date and the clock at the time. Then we'll have a plus, and then we'll have our generic value time. So control space, if you can remember what you named. It was G GV time, but uh, just to show you, like this. Then we need to specify what format uh, this one is in, and that will be in quotation marks. And the first one, it doesn't really matter this, but let's we can say day, day, month, month, even if you and had month, month, day, day, it wouldn't matter because we're not using this date. But uh, let's just keep it this one, like this. And then we will have a space, right? And then the hour, we want to have it fa uh, as big ones if you use a 24 hour format and small ones if not. So then minute and then seconds. And again, you can see here clearly the difference between month and minutes. This one is with bigs and this one is with smalls. So now we just need to have some culture info. So have a comma. And then we will say system, we use this, so press control space and you'll we'll see the intelligence, the intelligence, sorry. Globalization, culture info, invariant culture, like this. We, we did that before. So now we change this one to a date time and we will have this uh, date um, in front of it. We'll need to do that. So now this is it. Now what we'll need it is that we can do the the comparison, so we will have an if still in our for each row here. So let's search for an if, like this. And what we need to do is that we'll first compare this to our early. This one needs to be later than early, so bigger than the early. And what we need to do is that we'll say date time uh, input. And then I know we, we put in the same day, so we actually don't have to uh, format it back to only uh, time. But let me show you how I do if you have different dates. So we'll just say dot and then we'll say time of the day like this. So this one will give us only the time to work with. This is good if your date wasn't the 1st January of 2020 like we defined remember here. So say that we have some different dates and we only want to uh, compare the time, then you'll want to um, have this time of the day instead of using it without. So now we have the daytime input, time of the day, and we need to compare it to the early, daytime early. So that one will be, sorry, bigger than the date time early, and again, time of day, like this. Then we we'll also have the condition that we wanted it to be before 17.30. So we will have, in the condition, we will have an and, like this, then space, and then we'll just do the exact same thing again. So data, not the exact same thing, date time input and uh, time of day. And this one now, it has to be smaller than the date time late. So date time late, time of day again. So now if this condition is true, then we are in the interval. So we'll just drag in a right line. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get all the new videos about UiPath and RPA. So now we are here, we can say date time input. Now we'll just write out that we are indeed in the interval for this one, so to string. We have our time, then we'll say plus, quotation marks, space, and we can say is in the time span, like this. 
So when we're over here, we're in the time span, we can copy this right line, paste it in in the else, and then we go up to, um, and we have the text here, so we go up to the three dots here, so it's not in the time span. So now we created the workflow for Sarah, and we can see that we indeed have uh, got it to work. It'll run it, and it will be, we can inspect the data, and we'll see that we, Give us a few more seconds now we're here and we can see that we have indeed created our workflow so what what this is let me maybe um, in this sequence here we have a right line so let me delete this and let me run it again just so you can uh, you not get interrupted with the data it doesn't matter it wasn't wrong but we just have it to interrupt with our result now we will go to our output and we can see that we have five entries these trees are these three are is in the time span that's right that's right that's right this one is not in the time span correct this one is not in the time span so that's how you solve Sarah's case and uh, this great topic it's what the key takeaway from this lesson is that when you import um, date and time from Excel you will not get it in the right format per default Usually you won't get it in the right format and then you just need to use this get row item and format the value. So that's it for today. Have a good day. Bye. -bye.